Consider the absolute value of a function g of x. Taking the derivative of an absolute value function like this is actually pretty easy. You just have to know that the absolute value of g of x is the same as the square root of g of x squared. Remember that all the absolute value does is gets rid of a negative if there is one. By squaring g of x, that gets rid of the negatives, and by taking the square root, we basically get rid of the squaring. So all in all, we're left with g of x, but without any negatives that might have been there. So that's why this equality is true. By writing the absolute value function like this, we can take derivatives using the chain rule. So if g is differentiable at x, then indeed we can take the derivative of the absolute value of g of x. And here's what that looks like. First, we do a little bit of rewriting. We're saying that the absolute value of g of x is f of x, so what we're trying to find is f prime of x, the derivative. So we're looking for the derivative of the absolute value of g of x, but we know that's the same as the square root of g of x squared. So we're taking the derivative of that. Now to help us out in taking the derivative, we're going to rewrite that square root as a power of one half. So now we're taking the derivative of g of x squared all to the one half. And we can take this derivative with the chain rule. We have to begin with the derivative of the outside function, which is that power of one half. So we apply the power rule, bring the power of one half down as a factor, which we see there. Then leave the inside function unchanged, so we still just have g of x squared. Then we must subtract one from the power. One half minus one is negative one half. So that's what we've got. That's f prime of g in the context of the chain rule. Then what we have to do is multiply by the derivative of that inside function. To take the derivative of g of x squared, we basically have to do the same thing we just did. Bring that power of 2 out front as a factor, which we see there, and then don't change the inside function. So it's just 2 times g of x g of x now has a power of 1 because we subtracted 1 from that power of 2. The thing is, g of x is itself a function, so finally we also have to multiply by its derivative. We're applying the chain rule twice here. So finally at the end we multiply by g prime of x. This is why it was important that we assume g is differentiable at x, otherwise that would not make any sense. So applying the chain rule twice, we get here, and now we can do some simplification. 1 half times 2, those will cancel out. 1 half times 2 is 1. But then notice g of x squared has a negative power, so we can make that power positive by putting this in the denominator. We'll still have g of x and g prime of x in the numerator. Hence, we get g of x times g prime of x all over g of x squared to the positive one half. That power's positive now because we've moved it to the denominator. But a power of one half is the same as a square root, and we know that the square root of g of x squared is the same as the absolute value of g of x. So what's in the denominator is really just the absolute value of g of x, which gets us to our final answer. To take the derivative of the absolute value of g of x, we just do g of x times g prime all over the absolute value of g of x. Notice the pieces of this derivative. This here is g prime of x. It's not surprising that the derivative of the absolute value of g of x would have g prime of x in it. That's capturing how fast g is changing. But the rest of this stuff is actually pretty simple. g of x divided by the absolute value of g of x, those are always going to cancel out to 1 except when g is negative, in which case they'll divide out to negative 1. Just for example, if g of x was negative 5, we'd have negative 5 divided by the absolute value of negative 5, and they'd cancel out to negative 1. So the derivative is just going to be g prime for the values of x where g is positive, but when g of x is negative, these two things will cancel out and give us a negative factor, and we'll just have negative g prime. Let's use this nifty formula to try out a quick example. Let f of x equal the absolute value of x squared minus 4, and we want to find the derivative f prime of x. We know to take the derivative of an absolute value function, we need to just put the absolute value function in the denominator, so the absolute value of x squared minus 4, and then put the inside of the absolute value expression, x squared minus 4, in 
in the numerator. The only other thing we have to do is multiply by the derivative of that thing inside the absolute value bars. The thing inside is x squared, and its derivative is 2x. And so that's our derivative. Again, just looking at the formula to make the connection, it's just the absolute value function, right? Absolute value of g of x, we have that in the denominator. And then take what's inside the absolute value and put that in the numerator, so x squared minus 4, and just multiply by its derivative as well. And so that is our our derivative. Here's a graph for your reference. The light red is the graph of the function, and then in blue we see the derivative. You can see right here where the graph looks like it's been flipped up. That's where x squared minus 4 would be negative. So the absolute value function is flipping that up so that it's positive, and so our derivative is also hit by a factor of negative 1, which is why it looks like the derivative breaks there. One more example for you to try, f of x equals the absolute value of sine x, find the derivative. I'm going to put the answer on screen now. There's your answer, just absolute value function in the denominator, put the insides in the numerator, and then multiply by the derivative. Derivative of sine x is cosine x. So that's the derivative of the whole thing, and here's the graph of the function in red and its derivative in blue. So that's how to find the derivative of any absolute value function. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in this course. Thanks for watching.